We welcome all of you tonight. We gather together around, uh, around the Lord himself and around his word in joyful harmony, thanksgiving. We welcome those who have joined us on live stream also. This will be our 16th message in the New Covenant. God is known by all within the covenant. Now, the New Covenant is precisely that. It's a new. Yeah. New not by, uh, not by relation to time, but new by relation to type. It's a new kind of, new kind of covenant. Now, if you've got an ear to pick up on it, it's amazing uh, in Christendom as a whole how much talk there is that's just like Old Covenant talk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. It's quite startling to me. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit makes a point of how the how it's different, but men speak just as though they're living under the same kind of arrangements that run of the Old Covenant. Now the Old Covenant was uh, given to Abraham in embryo form. Very condensed and in initial, initial form. Galatians 6, uh, Galatians 3, 8 reminds us the scripture foreseen, how about that, the scripture foreseen. The scripture foreseen, see the word of God is living. Yeah, that's right. Foreseen that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. See what well, nobody knew at that time and that's what that meant. Yeah. That meant they were going to be justified by faith. See, nobody knew what that meant. Mm -hmm. But that was everything just compressed down to a single single sentence. And these shall all nations of the earth be blessed, Paul says, that's what he was talking about, being justified by faith. In Galatians 3, 13 and 14, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham, which, which we just read about, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit yeah. through faith. See, you know, nobody knew that. <laughs> Abraham didn't know what that's what that meant, or that's what it involved. And it, it's still, people don't know it's involved. See, yeah. through these shall all kings of the earth be blessed. This meant justify the heathen through faith. This meant that we might receive the promise of the Holy Spirit through faith. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. These are the realities that God is able to make known by men. Mm -hmm. He opened this up. That's right. So people preach the gospel, or they declare the, what they could see to be the new covenant. Somewhere along the line, blessings got to come out. This, this is blessing. Somewhere along the line, receiving the promise of the Spirit through faith. That's that's got because that's what it's that's what this is about. Mm -hmm. Now our text in Hebrews and in Jeremiah said that all everybody covered by the covenant, they'll all know me from the least. Yeah beginner mm -hmm. to the greatest. Yeah. There'll be degrees of it, we understand, but everybody, there's no such thing as a Christian that's unfamiliar with God. Amen. There isn't. There's some familiarity with God from the least to the greatest. Now I want to take a time to define what we mean by no. 
we live in an academic society which has really fouled things up. Boy, I tell you, one of the biggest enemies we got in the world is education. I'm telling you the truth. I'm an educated man. I'm still telling you that. One of the biggest enemies we got. In the Hebrew language, no. At this point, I want to establish that in, in Greek and Hebrew and English, it all means the same thing. Yeah. No means to ascertain. You can look at the thing and tell what it is. See? It means recognition. That's the Lord doing that. It means acquaintance. You're not taken off guard by what God does. Oh, you'd be surprised how many people are taken off guard by what God does. If God sends a storm, they get all, they get all shaky. What's going on? I got sick. Acquaintance with God. Awareness of God. He's here. Why do people sin? They're not aware of God. Amen. Oh, they'd be scared to sin if they were, see? Amen. Awareness. I'm coming on what no means. Yes. Familiarity and understanding. That's the Hebrew meaning of no. The Greek meaning of no is about the same thing. Awareness. Consider. As you can, you can ponder it, you can think over. See, someone you know, you can think about them. That's right, yes. Mm -hmm. Perceive. Mm -hmm. Be sure. This is the Lord. Mm. See? And understand. In the English, it means about the same thing. It means perceive. Perceive directly. That is, that the, when you meet the person, you say, "This is here. This is this is the one. Mm -hmm. This is Brother Bob." See, I, I perceive direct cognition. Mm -hmm. You're not just imagining. You know, this is who this is. Mm -hmm. An understanding of, recognize, acquainted with, discern. Mm -hmm. They'll all know me. When the day of Pentecost fully comes, <laughs> people that know me, <laughs> they'll know what happened. They'll know what happened. <clears throat> when the Holy Spirit fell on the household of Cornelius, Peter, he knew, he knew, what, he knew what happened. <laughs> they received the gift like we did. See, they know God. <clears throat> We're not talking about academics here. <clears throat> Being able to write like a term paper on God using the dictionary and the Bible and so forth. This is not what we're talking about at all. <laughs> Remember now, everybody in the New Covenant knows God. Is There's degrees of it. The, the novice doesn't know him as well as the seasoned veteran, but they all know God. <laughs> now, under the Old Covenant, the people didn't know God. And even those that had some acquaintance with him, it was very limited. Mm -hmm. Very limited. And you, if you doubt it was very limited, just pick up and let David, Job, and Solomon talk to you about death. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it won't be long. You'll know, hey, they don't know much about this subject. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why? It wasn't revealed. They knew it wasn't, mm -hmm. see? <coughs> now, under the Old Covenant, the people to whom the covenant was given, God several times said they refused mm -hmm. to know him. Yeah. They just bowed their backs and said, we don't want to know you. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be familiar with you. We don't want to know when you're around. We don't want to know what you want. We don't want to know your will. They refuse. Now here's how the Word of God states it. Jeremiah 9, 6. Thine habitation is in the midst of deceit through deceit. They refuse to know me. They refuse, they refuse to know me, saith the Lord. Yes. That is, know as much about them as, as, as was able to be known about them at the time. 
they refused. Now you be sure of this, brother. You just be sure of this. That wherever there's a professing Christian that is unacquainted with God, whatever they may say, they have refused to know God just like Israel. Yeah. Here it is again, Jeremiah 13, 10. See, what I'm, why I'm saying this is this kind of people do not exist under the new covenant. But it's all over the place in the churches. Mm -hmm. Amen. You see, are you saying the churches aren't under the new covenant? I'm saying, for the most part, yes, mm -hmm. that's that's right. Mm -hmm. Their religion is bogus; it's not real. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah thirteen ten. This evil people. This is God talking. He's not talking to Arabians, or Syrians, or Babylonians. He's talking to the Jews. Mm -hmm. This evil people which refuse to hear my words, which walk in the imagination of their heart and walk after other gods to serve them and to worship them, shall even be as this girdle which is good for nothing. How would you like God say to say of you, you're good for nothing? Would you like to hear that? Whoever doesn't know God, that's what God says to them, you're good for nothing. Just throw you away like a worn out girdle. Hosea 4 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Oh, now this is being spouted over the TV moguls. They're all the time talking about this. And they say people don't know about health, and so that's why they're unhealthy. Well, yeah, this is this is this is taught. People don't know how to build a church, and that's why they don't build it. That's not the kind of knowledge he's talking about. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected. Mm -hmm. See, and people say this lack of knowledge invariably, no matter who the preacher is mm -hmm. that says this, they're saying, they're saying that they just haven't been told. Mm -hmm. And so I'm here to tell you. Yeah. But that's not what God means. Yeah. Amen. He says they because they are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. Mm -hmm. Then he asked, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. See, and thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will forget thy children. This God, this, this is God said this. Yeah, yeah. You know, God's changed. God says, I can't change. Mm -hmm. right. I, the Lord, change not. You forget God? Well, God love will forget you. He'll forget your children. It's what he said. Yeah, this is what he said. Yeah. I'm highlighting this uh, to show what a blessing it is that all in the new covenant, all in the new covenant shall know me. That's what he, that's what he said now. Yes. All shall know me. Mm -hmm. From the least youngest to the greatest, oldest. From the least, less taught, to the greatest, extensively taught, see? From the least, just the beginning, to the greatest, seasoned veteran. They'll all yeah. know me. So when, they, when the veteran says something about God to the novice, the novice won't balk at it. They know enough about God to know, I better pay attention to this, see? No matter how long you've been a Christian, how long you've been in Christ, or how old you are, doesn't make any difference. When you hear someone that knows more about God than you know, tell it to you, it'll not put you back on your heels. You'll be able to pick it up, pick up on it and say, I need to pursue this some more. I, I want to know more about this. So you'll be able to tell it's from God. Yeah. See, if you can't tell something's from God, how do you know what to do? Mm -hmm. If someone tells you, this is what God says you've got to do, you've got to honor the blood moons. This is what's going around now these days. This is what, this is what preachers are preaching these days. Mm -hmm. The blood moons, which were the moons, new moons under the old law. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we're in some of these cycles now, and there's people that are telling God's people. We're not talking about a handful of people or that little dinky church down the block someplace. We're talking about millions of people. 
hundreds of millions of people that are being taught this. And people think it's true. But those that know God know this can't be true. Right. Amen. Something's wrong here. Yeah. I know God, and God doesn't talk about moons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's going to destroy the moon. What do you think he's going to give you, an extended discourse on the moon when it's a temporal thing, or the sun, or the stars, or the planets? Do you really think he's going to <laughs> give an extended <laughs> commentary on the temporal? Don't think temporal just means you. Temporal means the sun and the moon and the stars and the planets and the galaxies. And it means all of that too. But see, people can't pick, if they don't know God, they can't decipher that this is like low-grade baloney. I mean, it's not even a high-grade baloney. Got very little meat in it. Yeah, people are, people are more careful a lot of times. People are more careful about their buying groceries uh -huh. than they are in what they take in from God. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Well, this ought not to be. Amen. The greatest care must be uh, concerning Him. Now they now I told you under the old cover, you you refused, you refused to know me, which means God threw out enough. To provoke an interest in knowing God, there were people like David. He picked up. He picked. He picked up on it. He picked up on. It. He didn't refuse. See, so he Amen. he came, he gained as much as could be gained under the old covenant economy about God. Now let's uh, make a few observations about this knowledge of God. Wherever there was not knowledge of God. And he's talking about knowledge that had been revealed about God. God noted it. This did not pass his scrutiny. Isaiah 45, 4. Jacob, for Jacob my servant's sake, and Israel mine elect, I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. I am the Lord, and there's none else. There's no God beside me. I girded thee though thou hast not known me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Though, though thou hast, I did good to you. I gave you some advantages, even if you didn't know me. That was under the old covenant. Now. That's, right. That's not the arrangement under the new covenant. Uh -huh. Jeremiah 4.22, I've noticed, he said he, I'm underscoring that he took particular note mm -hmm. of people didn't know him, were unacquainted with him, couldn't perceive him, see? Mm -hmm. Couldn't recognize him. Weren't aware of him, weren't familiar with him, didn't understand him. That's what we're, that's what we're talking about here now. Yeah. Jeremiah 4.22, my people is foolish, for they have not known me. See, a person that doesn't know God is a fool. Yes. Yeah. They have none understanding. They're not wise. They are wise to do evil, but to do good they have no knowledge. <laughs> so they have all kind of recovery group groups for people that fall in the pit, but they don't have a reward system for people that walk a straight way. Yeah, how do you, how exactly do you explain that? They don't know not to do good, not to do evil. Jeremiah 5, 4, therefore I said, Surely these are poor, they are foolish, for they know not the way of the Lord nor the judgment of their God. We talk about fools now. And uh, like Solomon said a lot about fools, of which he was one when he got older. He said they're foolish because they, did, they, don't, they don't know the way of the Lord. They, they don't know how God operates. They don't know where God can be found. They don't know the God's ways. They don't know about, about my judgments. They do things. They should know I'll judge them for doing these things, but they don't, they don't. Foolish. That's, that's, he said this to his people. My people are foolish. Hosea 4.1. 
Yet I'm emphasizing that where there is no knowledge of God, where there was no knowledge of God, even of old time, God was dissatisfied with that situation. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there's no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. So, what does God really think about the good old USA? Hmm? You think he's passed over? What has happened to this country? He says, I have a controversy. Now, who's going to win this controversy? Controversy because he's against this. He says, there's no truth. Think all the abundance of truth that's been revealed. And how scarce, how absolutely scarce it is. This is inexcusable. We don't want anybody to explain this to us. No mercy nor knowledge of God in the land. Here's another statement, Hosea 4, 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. I've read that to you before. They, they, they've forgotten the law. Yeah. Uh -huh. Hosea 11, 3. I taught Ephraim. Yeah. That's a name for Israel when they were in a wayward state. Uh -huh. I taught Ephraim also to go, asking, taking them by the arms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See? Have them walk. Yeah. Uh -huh. But they knew not that I healed them. They didn't know him. They didn't know him. Every one of you, at some point in your life, God had you by the, Amen. held you by the arms and helped you walk and helped you, help you toddle along in the kingdom of God. Huh? Right. When you really did hardly knew anything, but He held you up. See. Yes. But you grew out of it by the grace of God, because yes. the new covenant, you don't, you don't always have to be, yes. assisted that way. Now, God desired for people to know him, even of old time. He said in Hosea 6, 6, I desired mercy, not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God. I desired the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. Well, Solomon offered burnt offerings in the hundreds of thousands. Must have been quite a sight. He said, I desired the knowledge of God more than all burnt offerings. Just one person that knows God is worth more than a person that gives and gives and gives and gives and gives and sacrifices. See, just one person that knows God yeah. is more pleasing to God. See, it pleases God when you know him. You remember Eli's, Eli's sons... It says of him, now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial, that's Satan. They knew not the Lord. That was <laughs> They were children of Satan because of this characteristic. They didn't know God. This is still the way it is. People that don't know God may be church members, but they're children of the devil. Now, we ought also ought to underscore that the wisdom of the world can't bring this knowledge, this knowledge of God we're talking about. They shall all know me. This, the wisdom of the world doesn't bring this. After the wisdom of God, after that in the wisdom of God, that is, God deliberately made this circumstance. In the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. See, God arranged it so you can't come to know him by worldly yeah. education. Amen. It's arranged that way. You can't circumvent this. There's no way you can out, out fox God on this. Right. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching. This is the very thing the modern church wants to cut down on. Mm -hmm. They want to cut down on preaching and have more singing. Mm -hmm. A terrible singing too. I don't like the singing they have. But this is how they think. Mm -hmm. But you come to know God by hearing about God in proclamation, yes. in yeah. bold affirmation. Yeah. 
Now, some examples of, of not knowing Christ. Give some examples of it. And during his ministry, there were some examples of this. This now is after Jesus is raised from the dead. He appears to one of the women, and he does it in, in a glorified state. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. She, she, did, she didn't know. See, she was familiar with Jesus the teacher, Jesus the miracle worker, Jesus the feeder. She was familiar with that Jesus, but the glorified Jesus? She didn't know it was Jesus. Do you suppose there's been times when you confronted Christ and you didn't know it was Christ? Maybe you thought it was some person, you know. Here's another example. John 21, 4. Jesus confronts some of his disciples when they were fishing. But when the morning came, when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples knew not it was Jesus. Yeah. See, but before any benefit could be realized by either that woman uh -huh. or by these disciples, Jesus had to identify who he was. Yes. There wasn't any benefit until they knew who they were dealing with. Jesus made himself known to them. They didn't know at first. They didn't know. See, I'm showing you the disadvantage of not knowing. Yeah. Luke 19:44. Here's a, here's another one. Jesus beheld the city of Jerusalem, and he wept over it. And they say, he, they told him, that shall lay thee even to the ground of thy children within thee, and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another, because, yeah. because mm -hmm. thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. Amen. I came here to bless this city, and the city didn't know what was going on and one of the most terrible punishments in the history of the world yes. was the destruction of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. You stand your hair on end to read some of the accounts of it. Yeah. That's something God did yeah. because they did not know they were being visited yes. Amen. by God. Now, by the grace of God, I've been visited in my waywardness. I was visited, mm -hmm. but I knew it that I, mm -hmm. I came out from it. I'm showing you the disadvantage of not knowing. If, yeah. if you if you are not aware mm -hmm. that God's dealing with you, mm -hmm. you are in big trouble. Yeah. Amen. Uh -huh. That's right. That doesn't have to be that way. Mm -hmm. You're going to ask the Lord to open your eyes up. Maybe you maybe you think He's dealing with you, but you're not quite sure. Tell him. Don't tell us that. Tell him that. Amen. He'll open it up to you. He will. If he's dealing with you, he'll make, he'll confirm it. He'll get the confirmation to you some way because you're not going to get off first base until uh -huh. you recognize him. Until yeah, you know he's him. And he, of course, you want to stay away from uh, any theology that has God in heaven inactive and Things are just running along here by the institution. You want to avoid that sort of thing. Yeah. Now, I want to deal briefly here with the practicality of the knowledge of God. I mean, this is a wonderful thing to have, the knowledge of God. <coughs> There's a statement made in Jeremiah 22, 16 that intrigued me. He judged the cause of the poor and needy. Then it was well with him. Was not this to know me, saith the Lord? Another version gives you the fuller sense. Is not this what it means to know me? The fact that he knew me, that's why he took up the cause of the needy mm -hmm. <laughs> and the poor. You see, yeah. he knew how I was. This is how, this is how I am, God says. This is how I am. I take up the cause of the poor, and I take up the cause of the needy. Yeah. This is how I am. Yeah. Uh -huh. So this person over here that took up the cause of the poor and took up the cause of the needy, why did he do that? Because he knew that's, that's the way I am. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. knowing God. Yeah. Knowing God will prompt you to do things you will not do otherwise. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure you can see this. Mm -hmm. Here's another practicality now of knowing God. 
Jeremiah 24, 7. I will give them a heart to know me. So you, <laughs> you got to have a special heart to, to know God. But I'll give them a heart to know me, that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God, for they shall return unto me with their whole heart. Ah, ah, this is what happens when you know, when you know you're dealing with God, you return to him with your whole heart. Amen. Yeah, why don't people return to the Lord? They don't know him. How does God feel about not knowing him? He has a controversy with such people. They're not going to get off first base. That's very practical. Let's take this a little further. Ezekiel 11, 19, and 20. I will give them one heart. I will put a new spirit within you. I will take the stony heart out of their flesh. I will give them a heart of flesh that they may walk in my statutes and keep mine ordinances and do them. And they shall be my people and I will be their God. See, now here's the practicality of knowing God. If you know God, and see, this is loose phraseology today. I know my so-and-so knows the Lord, but they're just having this trouble with waywardness or whatever. Don't use that phrase, know the Lord, in a loose loose. That doesn't mean know about the Lord. That's not what that means. That means you recognize him, you sense him, you detect him. What'll happen? They'll, they'll walk in my statutes and keep my ordinances. So I thought that's under the old covenant. Well, it's under the new covenant too. Yeah. Romans the eighth chapter, verse four tells us that the righteousness of the law is fulfilled in us yes. who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Amen. So what the law requires that you couldn't do before, mm -hmm. now you do it. Mm -hmm. That's what the knowledge of God will do. Yeah. That's what it'll do. That's the practicality of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ezekiel 36, 27, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. This will happen. Amen. So I'm having trouble doing that. Well, don't let anyone convince you that it doesn't have to be done. Mm. Do you think that God divides a salvation that transforms you, gives you a new heart, gives you a new spirit, draws you to him and inclines you to have, think like him, so that you could not walk in his statutes? Do you really think that? After what he said here? He said, I'll do this. I'll put my spirit in you. And you'll, you'll do what you, could, what you couldn't do before. I Let me say it right. What you didn't do before, you'll do. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. That's what knowing God. Knowing God is a very pleasant experience. Amen. Very uplifting experience. When you have some part of your pondering God, you actually can kind of see with greater clarity who he is and what he does and what he likes and so forth. And it's like refreshes your, refreshes your soul. It says, see, what can I do to please the Lord? And you'll, you'll always find something yeah, amen. you can do to please the Lord. Practicality of, yeah. let's take this a little further. Let's take an apostolic doctrine about knowing God and how, how practical it is. This is 2 Peter 1, 2. Grace and peace be multiplied to you. I say, grace and peace be multiplied That's to it. you right. through the knowledge of God uh -huh. and of Jesus the Lord. Jesus our Lord. So see, when you know God, the conveyance of grace and peace are, uh, begin to increase increased measures come to you. And it's harder to agitate you. It's harder for you to be in a quandary, so to speak, yeah. and confused. You get multiplication of grace and peace. A lot of grace and grace. Oh, there's nothing grace can't do. Grace will teach you how to Deny ungodliness and worldly lusts. Grace will move you to labor more abundantly than they all. You know, there's a lot of grace, but see, how do you get grace? By studying about it? Well, we, we do recommend you study about it, I understand. But grace and peace come to you through the conduit of the knowledge of God. The more acquainted 
See, this is how much God wants to mm -hmm. lavish good things upon you. The more you know of God, the more peace and grace you get. It's through the knowledge of God. Well, what if a person is ignorant of God? They don't get peace and they don't get grace. Yes, that's right. Let's look at this again. <clears throat> This is um, 2 Peter 1.3. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things, I say all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. So here's again, here's the, the conduit that leads from heaven to earth. Yeah that brings you everything that pertains or applies to living mm -hmm. and being godly. What, yeah. what, do you, what do you need to live and be godly? Mm -hmm. It comes to you through your knowledge of God. If you've got a little tiny mm -hmm. conduit line, you get a little bit of grace, a little bit of knowledge. You don't get much. It comes through the knowledge of God. So that ought to be an incentive to know the Lord very well. Amen. Be acquainted with Him. So it doesn't take you a long time to pick up on it is the Lord. You can, you can do it rather rapidly. Yeah. So there's, a, there's something else. All things pertaining to life and God are given to you through. Mm -hmm. Here's something else. Second Peter 2.20 If after you have, escaped, you have escaped the pollutions of the world through mm -hmm. the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You, es but how you escape the pollutions of the world when you, qu when you quit doing what the pollution suggests. Right. Yeah. That's deliverance, see? So how do you escape the pollutions of the world? How do you keep the world from sullying your soul, contaminating your thinking, misdirecting your affection, moving you to do things that aggravate God? How, how do you get this kind of material. It's through, mm -hmm. you escape all of this through mm -hmm. the knowledge of God. Amen. The closer you know God, the further you are from the world. That's right. The further you are from the devil. Amen. The harder it is for the devil to tempt you. Amen. This is the way it works. But what if you're unacquainted with God? What if you can't recognize? What if you're like, what if you're like the women before when they met Jesus, they just didn't know who it was? Mm -hmm. Or they saw disciples saw him standing on the shore, but they didn't know who it was. Or Jerusalem is visited by Jesus, and they didn't know who it was. What if you don't know who it is? Well, you're in a you're, you want to get out of that state. Yeah. Whatever it takes, get out of it. And not to have the knowledge of God for a group of Christians or an individual Christian, not to know God. This is shameful. That's right. All right, here it is, 1 Corinthians 15, 34. We don't have to guess about this. Yeah. Awake to righteousness. He says this to a whole church. Uh -huh. Awake to righteousness and sin not, mm -hmm. for some have not the knowledge of God. Yes. Then he adds, uh -huh. I speak this to your shame. Yeah, amen. Uh -huh. Any church member, whoever they are, wherever they are, if they don't know God, they should be ashamed. It's, mm -hmm. This is something to be ashamed of. Yeah. After what God's done, mm. right. convicting you of sin by the Holy yeah. Spirit, drawing you yeah. to Jesus, giving you to yeah. Jesus, yeah. washing away your sins, purging your conscience with dead works, giving you access to God, giving you access to Him, giving you joy, grace and peace. After all He's done mm. to be unacquainted with God, to have no perception of God, to not be able to tell when he's around or what he wants, that's shameful. Yeah. Now God can God can correct this <laughs> if you draw near. You got but you gotta come to him. You have to do it. Amen. See now there are imaginations, aberrant thoughts 
that interfere with proper thinking. Mm -hmm. And no person is free from being assaulted with these yeah. imaginations. Mm -hmm. Satan sees to it that they, they come. Mm -hmm. But he's giving you spiritual weaponry to handle these. Yeah. Found here in 2 Corinthians 10.3. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, mm -hmm. huh? and every high thing that exalts itself against, against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. All right, here you are. This wayward thought. You didn't want it. Here it is. It's in your mind. You've got the thought. You don't want the thought. You abhor the thought. All right, God's given you weapons because you've got to throw this thing down or it will interfere with you knowing God. If you do not throw that thought down, you'll end up knowing God less. Because that's what the thought's designed to do. Right, it's designed to make God a little fuzzy. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, right. To make it hard to understand God, hard to see God, hard to comprehend God. That's what those thoughts, temptations, that's what they're all about. Mm -hmm. But he's given you spiritual weapons to throw them down. Mm -hmm. Take them captive. Mm -hmm. And you force your mind yeah. uh -huh. to think on things above. Amen. Well, put it another way. You keep under your body That's right. yes. Amen. and bring it into subjection, Amen. see? Yes. The reason is because it interferes mm -hmm. with the knowledge of God. Now, this area of the knowledge of God, this is an area of constant increase. You'll never, while you're in this world, and I'm not sure it will even be in the world to come, you'll never fully know God. Even in the world to come, I think it's going to register on your conscience that's a lot more to God than I can presently see. Amen. That's how big God is. Yeah. All right, now here's Colossians 1.10. There's something Paul prayed for the churches. That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and, <clears throat> and, and increasing yeah. in the knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. See, now that... Uh, or right, I'll just speak for myself. That's what I want for all of you. Increase in the knowledge of God. To be more conversant about as well as with God. See? I want this for myself. We, and we desire this for each other. See? I don't want to be a spiritual dumb cluck. Excuse the uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> slang. But I don't. There are spiritual dumb clucks. They just... But it's a big disadvantage not to know God because all of the good stuff comes through yes, yes, the knowledge of God. And you can increase. This is our objective. When we, when we meet together, we just aren't meeting here because we ought to do it. Mm -hmm. Although we ought, yeah, we admit that this is, this is right and we ought to do it. We don't forsake the same of ourselves together. But the, the real reason it drives us because there's something about more, one or more people that know the Lord gathering together. Uh -huh. There Jesus is in the midst of them. Uh -huh. In John 14, 21, Jesus said he'd manifest himself. Yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. There's something about that that increases your knowledge of God. And all of a sudden, you find yourself integrating certain statements of Scripture. And, yeah. and your, your understanding is being enlarged and things make more sense. Yeah. In the kingdom of God, sinning is, uh, becomes unreasonable. Yes. Righteousness becomes reasonable. What is that? That's increasing yes. in the knowledge of God. And the knowledge of God, it, it, it has a heavenly fragrance to it. God's ple very pleased with it. God doesn't need anything, mm -hmm. but he's very pleased when people know him. Mm -hmm. It says in 2 Corinthians 2.14, Thanks be unto God, now, oh, excuse me, now, thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ and maketh manifest the 
savor of his knowledge by us at every place. <laughs> when people see you and hear you, they ought to get the idea that it's very pleasant to know God. Yes, amen. Amen. They may not agree with it, but this ought to come, this ought to yeah. come across a savor yeah. of the knowledge of God in every place. God. And the knowledge of God is, is enlightening. 2 Corinthians 4, 6, For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give us, the, give us the light, the light, the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So the, the more you see God, the more you actually see everything else. Everything else is lit up by the knowledge of God. And we're talking now about the practicality of the knowledge of God. And it brings to us the spirit of wisdom and revelation. The spirit yeah. of wisdom and revelation. This means your, your thinking suddenly it expands. The circumference of your thinking is, it is enlarged very much. This is Ephesians 1, 17, another prayer. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of of wisdom and revelation mm. in, in yeah. the knowledge of Him. So, as you know God, you actually become more wise. Yeah. Uh -huh. And why wisdom is the proper use or utility of, of knowledge. You know what to do mm -hmm. with knowledge. Now, this is an area also where... Uh, the knowledge of God where unity can be realized. Unity can be secured more firmly where God is known. Ephesians 4.13, Till we all come in the unity of the faith and, and of the knowledge of the Son of God. See, there it is. You know God more, I know God more. That, that knits us tighter together. Amen. And it moves us to, to count competing interests as lost and just done. If you understand, if you know God, you understand God, you perceive God, you're acquainted with God, it's going to be easier to give up stuff that competes with God. Yeah. Amen. Yes. All right, here it is. Philippians 3.8. Yea, doubtless that I count all things but loss for the excellency mm -hmm. of the knowledge yes. of Christ Jesus my Lord. See? <laughs> There is no substitute for knowing God and knowing Christ. Because that's what eternal life is, knowing God and Jesus Christ. But there's no substitute for it. It doesn't make any difference who else you know or don't know. If you know God and Christ, you got the upper hand in everything. And this, uh, this brings a filling with, spirit, with wisdom and spiritual understanding. Put it another way, Colossians 1.9. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Now the other started with the wisdom and understanding, said you got it through the knowledge. Here it, it turns it around and says you're filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So when you know God, part of knowing God is knowing his will. That's yeah. part of it. That's right. And then one, uh, one last thing about the practicality of knowing God. It produces fruit. For God. Fruit is for God. You understand that? Second mm -hmm. Peter 1.8. If these things be in you and abound, let's say add to your faith virtue to virtue, knowledge, knowledge temperance, so forth. If these things be in you and abound, they make you that you should neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge yes. of our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> See, there's a lot of times uh, in the world system of things, you can know a lot of stuff that's not practical. I used to have men that worked for me, and they had lowly jobs, but they had a man, they had an extensive education, but it just didn't apply to anything now, and so they. Their knowledge had no usefulness. 
but in Christ as such you are fruitful yes, amen. in the knowledge of him. So in conclusion, let me just wrap this up. In Christ you can recognize God. In Christ, you can know the will of God. Yes, amen. In Christ, you can have a larger understanding of God's ways. In Christ, you can be assured of your spiritual status. In Christ, you can obtain every needed resource for life and godliness. In Christ, you can escape the pollutions of the world. In Christ, you can possess a strong and fruitful determination. In Christ, you can express constant, experience constant increase and in growth. That's what it means to know the Lord. And the, our text said, they shall all know me from the least to the greatest. You fit in there someplace. Everybody, everybody in this room that's in Christ fits in there someplace. Mm -hmm. From the least to the greatest. They all fit in there. Amen. They all, it doesn't say they can, it says they all shall mm -hmm. know the Lord. So, it would be wise on your part to take a little inventory and, you, and I think you will find that you know more of God since you've been in Christ. You know more of God mm -hmm. than you dare to think. Mm -hmm. But it'll take, it'll take some self-examination. You'll, you'll pick up on it. Mm -hmm. If you just write it down pretty soon, you'll have a full page of stuff you know that maybe you hadn't thought about. Mm -hmm. And what I'm telling you is the reason you know it is because you know God. Yes, amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, Aaron has our exhortation tonight.